everyone, and thank you for joining me for today's final installment in our suffrage series. Uh, this is the third video, so if you missed the first two, check out the, the links in the description, and you can catch up on the introduction to women suffrage. Uh, today, I'm really excited to share specific women who contributed to, to women suffrage uh, on a national level, but I'm also going to highlight specific women from Kentucky. We have a newspaper printed in 1900 with an illustration of a woman. We have a stethoscope, a lump of clay, and a bag of tea. You probably guessed that the stethoscope relates to being a doctor. The newspaper might have to do with being a writer but the other ones aren't so obvious. Remember in the beginning when I mentioned most women used their talents to further their causes? This happened in many different ways. It's even more impressive when you realize that for the most part, women weren't allowed to be doctors for a long time, and they weren't allowed to express their opinions through writing as often as men. In fact, some women in the 1800s used fake male names or pseudonyms to get their books published. The first African-American woman doctor in Lexington was Mary Britton. She experimented with electrotherapy and hydrotherapy, or healing with water, which was very new at the time. She served all kinds of people who needed her help in her community, and she also fought for women suffrage. She delivered speeches and wrote essays, just like her sister, Julia, who was a regionally famous pianist and used her musical talent to get people's attention. Many Black women in Kentucky who pursued journalism became nationally famous, like Lucy Wilmot Smith, who wrote for a newspaper headquartered in Louisville. Other contributors included Ida B. Wells, a famous Tennessee woman who was not afraid to publish articles about the unfair treatment of the Black community in the South. Some women were really good at public speaking. The woman featured on the newspaper role is named Mary Church Terrell, who lectured all about getting the vote and how important it was for women. When discussing all of these suffragists, it's easy to see a pattern here. What they had in common was uplifting their community in their own ways. They identified a problem, like lack of health care, lack of attention to their cause, lack of education, and they used their talents and their passion as a way to fix it. For example, Mary and Carolyn Verhoff noticed that there were a lot of stray animals in Louisville at the time and across the river in Indiana as well. These animals had nowhere to go and they were roaming the streets. Because they cared about animals, they founded what would later become the Kentucky Humane Society. Additionally, they loved riding their bikes and they taught their friends how to ride. They served on suffrage committees as well. The clay represents sculpting. That's right, sculpting was considered a male art form at the time. Edmonia Lewis was born a free woman in New York before the Civil War. She had a passion for sculpting, but she realized that in order to learn, she had to go outside the U.S. to do it. She spent most of her career in Italy becoming a fine artist, but she broke classical tradition and the gender barrier to do it. Enid Yandel from Louisville was a world-renowned sculptor and also fought for women's rights. She worked on the 1893 Chicago World's Fair, which unfortunately was known for excluding many talented women, including Mary Britton, who was refused entrance to the Kentucky building. Later in life, she founded an art school that accepted whoever wanted to learn, regardless of gender, and she helped campaign for Calvin Coolidge, who ran on a woman's suffrage platform. Some women were great at organizing, like Nanny Helen Burroughs, who I mentioned earlier. Nanny founded the National Baptist Women's Convention, which she moved to Kentucky in 1900, because she felt Kentucky was central to the region and the women she wanted to reach. Her interests included bookkeeping and writing, public speaking, and especially education when she founded a school for girls. She even helped catalog important African-American history to be passed down to future generations. Finally, you're probably wondering why there's a tea bag in this collection. Well, most women only had one space to host their friends, and that was their living room. For example, the premier suffrage leader in Louisville was named Susan Look Avery. She founded the local women's club, and she invited famous people to lecture about women's suffrage in her home on Broadway, which is close to the main library today. Much of what they discussed was done over tea. 
And later, selling tea was used to fundraise for women's suffrage, kind of like how Girl Scout cookies help fund the Scouts. Alva Belmont, a famous wealthy woman in Rhode Island, hosted suffrage tea at her mansion, where guests could take home special tea cups that said votes for women. These women were able to lend their talents to public service and activism in a meaningful way. How do you use your talents and make your voice heard? What issues are important to you? Maybe you're good at teaching your friends a new skill. Maybe you love helping animals and expressing yourself through art. So if you have time, take a few moments to discuss with your teacher how you would want to communicate, even if you can only do it from your living room like suffragists did 100 years ago. So thank you everyone for watching this series. Later, it will be produced in partnership with Atherton High School in their media class. So um, it will look a little bit more polished, but this will be the class session meant to be watched all at once by elementary students around Kentucky. And uh, we really look forward to sending this out. And of course, if you're an adult um, or a student, please join us for the What is a Vote Worth exhibit opening later this year. Uh, as well as the Suffrage Play Festival. Those dates will be announced soon. Uh, so please stay tuned for that. We're really excited to share. So thank you again for watching and we'll see you next time.